So we're going to try and install the new Salix on this Toshiba Satellite Pro. Um, the install image is simply that it will boot into <coughs> an install prompt. That's it. You do get the choice of key map and you get to choose from a wide range of different key maps. And once you've chosen which one, you come to this screen. Install Salix using a step-by-step -step guide. So we're going to go for that, yes, please. Where do we want to install it? Well, we want to install it to SDA, so we can use the arrow keys to choose the disk. SDA will be the hard drive um, in most cases. So we'll, do, we'll select that one and hit space to put a asterisk, ampersand, whatever thing that is in there. And then we'll just tab down to the go or exit and we'll select go. And then we can do the drive partitioning if we want. Um, I'm going to choose to delete the existing partition. Uh, sorry, Dan, this is Mio XFCE that I'm deleting here. Sorry, mate. This is a good way of checking that you've actually got the right drive. You can see it's designated number, so it's dev SDA1 and the size of it there and what it currently is. So we've got, oh, you can't quite see that. All right, you can just about see that. So you can see it's 223.6 gig, uh, ID83 and type Linux. Okay, so I'm gonna choose to delete that. Okay, and now it's just showing it as free space. So now I'm gonna select along the bottom here, new. And we'll have it the full size again. You can choose to add a um, swap partition if you like. You can set up the partitions to, for, to have boot, root, home, etc. like that. But you can have everything in one partition. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select the default, which is 223.6 gigs, which is the size of the drive. And we're going to make it primary. Yes, of course. Okay. And now we will write that. Oh, I'm going to go all the way along. You can't go down. Okay, so we write that. Write the partition table to disk. You have to type physically yes or no. Right, so the partition table has been altered. Um, can we make it bootable from here? Toggle bootable flag of current partition. Yes, we want that. So we want to make that bootable. Yeah, so now it's there, you see. And I then think we have to write it again. I'm not sure. Not sure about that. I could have done that probably in the previous step. Okay, so that's been done now. So we've now got a brand new partition with nothing on it. Full size of the disk. It's a Linux partition. DevSDA, we've not formatted it. It's taken it as XT4 anyway. I don't believe we had a choice particularly. This is something. Right, it says quit without writing changes, but we've already written the changes twice. So, okay. I've not created a swap partition with Linux F disk. Do you want to continue installing without one? Obviously, yes. Um, you will rarely need a swap file especially on an SSD as this is. So we're going to select yes, hit enter. And now we select partition from the following list to use for your root partition. Well, we've only got the one partition, which is dev SDA one. So we'll select that one. And now we can format it. If this partition has not been formatted, you should format it. Note this will erase all data on it. Yeah, there's no data on it because it's just been created. So we'll format, quick format with no bad block check-in. Um, it's much the quicker way. And now we can choose which file system we want. So we can get ext3, uh, 2, 3, 4, IBM's journal file system, RiserFS, ButterFS, Flash Friendly file system. Don't even know what that is. And X, XFS. But I'm going to go with ext4 because I like ext4 and that's what I generally use. 
on all of my Linuxes. So we'll go for that. Okay, so it's formatting it now. Okay, so this is our FS tab, which is our file system table. Um, and devsda1 is root, formatted ext4, and it's drive defaults. So that's okay. Now we can choose to install. We're obviously booted from a USB stick, so we're going to install from Salix USB stick. We can install from a CD or DVD if that's what we booted with, or from a hard drive partition if we've got the installer on there, but it's going to be pretty much nine times out of 10. If you're booting from a USB stick, it'll be at number one. So we'll go with that. Make sure the USB stick containing the Salix package directory is inserted into a USB port and then press enter to begin the scanning process. Now you see, we've booted it off that, so it's there. Okay, it's found it on SDB1, which is SDB, which is the USB stick. Uh, we can go the installation mode we prefer from the following. Full default will install everything. That includes one application per task. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, such as an office suite, a multimedia player, a CD, DVD burner, etc. Basic will only install a minimum graphical environment and a web browser. Core will install only the minimum essentials for your system to start in console mode. In other words, no display manager, no um, desktop environment. It will just be a command line from which you will then log in and do your installs. So we're going to go full and have everything. So OK that. And it's installing this. And this is going to be a whole bunch of different screens flashing up as it installs every single component package of Salix. So we'll sit back and watch that happen.
Okay, now it's asking us to install the bootloader. Most Linux distributions ship with the GIMP2 um, bootloader, and that's what loads the loaders of each of your operating systems. You can have multiple boots of about four or five, or as many as you like, pretty much. Linux distributions all booting from the same grub. Um, but this uses Lilo, which is the old one. And Salix is built and based off of the new Slackware 15. I say new, it's been out about a year now. Um, and Slackware uses Lilo. So we're going to use that simple try to install Lilo automatically. This has never failed for me. So expect it to fail for me now. Uh, standard Linux console, safe choice. Okay, yes. Okay, might require extra parameters to be passed to the kernel. If you need to pass parameters to the kernel when you booted the Salix boot disk, you'll probably want to enter the same ones here. Most systems won't require any parameters. So uh, just hit enter to continue, blah, 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 blah. If you don't need any, just hit enter. So I'm going to hit enter. All right, the super block of your root Linux partition, which could be made the bootable partition with Windows or Linux F disk or booted with a program like blah, 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 blah. Now we're going to install it to the master boot record because I've got this machine set up in uh, legacy BIOS mode. So we boot from the master boot record rather than a ESP uh, partition. So we'll go for our master boot record. Is the hardware clock set to coordinated universal time? If it is, select yes here. If the hardware clock is set to the current local time, um, then say no here. If you're not sure what this is, you should answer no here. I'll hit no here then. And this is where we choose where we actually are. So uh, we are Greenwich Mean Time. It's still British Summer Time. So is that... Uh, there British summer time Greenwich mean time um, God I wish we could just choose Europe London oh we can that'll do we can change this later if it uh, gives us Greenwich mean time or whatever we don't particularly want Daylight saving can be a pain in the buttocks. So we're going to just choose Europe, London and be done with it. And uh, which current local? English, GB, UTF-8. So that's the key map, system language, etc. that we want. English for Britain. You can have English for wherever. But I'm going to go English for Britain because I'm British English. Do you want to have number lock enabled or disabled on boot? Well, obviously enabled, I think. You'll now be presented with some dialogues so that you can create one or more user accounts in your new system. The first user you will create will be able to run commands as a privileged user through sudo. Any other user will not be able to run commands with sudo unless you add them to the wheel group. The root user is disabled by default on Salix. So we'll go for this. I'm going to be the first user, so I'll get sudo privileges. Golden. Please choose an option, create a new account. That'll do. We'll have some of that. New account name. Ghost. Okay. Password for the account. Hopefully this is just going to bring up a load of dots. If it doesn't, I'm going to blur it. Brilliant. Too short, six characters in memory. Okay. Um, Enter password again. Brilliant. Uh, modify account properties. This group some membership. Delete accounts. Create a new group. Delete groups. No, nope, we've finished user setup. We've created a new account and given it its password. So we'll exit user setup. Uh, select your preferred repository mirror where we're going to get all our updates and our software from. Uh, your selection will be applied to the Etsy slapped get slapped get RC and the Etsy slapped get slapped SRC RC files. 
Okay, so I think we'll go with Slackway UK forward slash Salix. Can't say fairer than that. Or we could go to the Mirror Service Org. Mm. Uh, we've got a choice of two, but I'm going to stick with the Slackway UK Salix one. Okay, and now, now we get to reboot and see what we've got. Oh boy. Hold your breath. It's unmounted the stick. Brilliant, so the stick's out. Here we go. Hey, not bad. Select an OS to boot. Obviously we've only got Selix, so that's brilliant. Good old passing elf. That always reminds me of <laughs> Garth. So there's our login. Oop, my name. And my password. And boom. We're in Salix. How's that? I'll um, do a second video from within Salix. But that's all for now. So, bye.